brought to you by Charity Mobile, the phone company that shares your values. More information is available at CharityMobile.com. The latest attacks on the sacred traditions of the Church are taking the form of the ongoing battle of the Synod of Synodality, a three-year-long meeting of the Church that involves the hierarchy, your parish, typical parishioners, non-Catholics, and the press. The outcome seems predetermined, as these things have been during the reign of Francis the Great, with the German bishops pushing for an extreme makeover of the Catholic faith, with the aim of making it 100% compatible with the ever-changing values of the world, while Francis, at the conclusion of the Synod, will probably issue a document that is radical, but seems moderate compared to what the German bishops are doing. It's a song and dance, and today we have more news on the Synod of Synodality, which continues despite the state of the world at the present time. But first, let's look at some Catholics taking some action to defend the traditions of the faith. What you're seeing is a blessing given by a traditional priest in front of the St. Roche Church to a group of brave mothers of priests who are making a pilgrimage on foot from Paris to Rome to ask Francis for the protection of the Apostolic Mass and for all priests to have the right to say that form of the Mass. What they're basically asking for him is to rescind Traditionis Custodis. I wish them all luck, and I invite you to pray for their safe travels and success in their mission. On to our story, which comes from the Catholic News Agency. A cardinal is telling the more radical element in the church to not get their hopes up about radically changing the church into the universal church of man. I have to wonder if he's speaking on behalf of Francis or in silent opposition to him. Though, when you really dig into this, he's not so much telling them to tone down their hopes, but rather that they have their own plan. Headline, Cardinal Graish. Synod on Synodality is not sociological analysis of the Church. It's worth noting that Cardinal Graish is the chief organizer for the Synod, so his opinion matters, and what's more, he has the ear of Francis. Or rather, he takes his marching orders on the Synod from Francis. Quote, A Vatican Cardinal has said that the Synod on Synodality is a process of discernment, not a sociological survey. This synodal process is not a sociological analysis of the Church, but it is a discernment process. And when we say discernment, that means that we are trying to listen to the Holy Spirit, Cardinal Mario Graish told CNA. The Maltese Cardinal said that the question that the Synod on Synodality was trying to answer is, what is the type of church that the Holy Spirit is enlightening us to have for today? By presenting this, these themes to the people of God, we can hope that we can help them to engage in this discernment process in a prayerful attitude, he said in an interview conducted on February 17th. Because, after all, this is not an exchange of opinions. I say mine and you say yours. But together as a community, we try to do this personal discernment and this ecclesial discernment that is listening to the Holy Spirit together. End quote. Aside from this clear democratization of the church, the, pure, the purpose here is to figure out what type of church we are to have today. That's the stated purpose. And it's a rather implicit admission that they want to change the church using the synodal process. There are essentially two principal factions for this changing process. The radical element represented by the German Bishops' Conference and the slightly less radical who want to change the church, but to do it in incremental movements and with concessions made to the radical element represented by Cardinal Graich. The rest are on the sidelines. You and I, that's everyone else, and everyone in the main debate claim the Holy Spirit is on their side of the argument, and it's really just also tiresome. Catholic News Agency also had a report from that radical element headed by Bishop Botzing of Germany, who for the life of him cannot be bothered to dress like a bishop, I and mean, we look at him. Instead, he shows up in public places dressed like a librarian or a Protestant minister. Bishop Botzing, in that separate story, tells us that it's time to change the church's teaching on the marital act, telling us that God doesn't see such acts that are suitable for the nuptial state and exclusive morally to it as a sin when done outside of the nuptial state. In other words, he wants the church to adopt the world's view of the marital act. Quote, the chairman of the German Catholic Bishops Conference has called for changes to the church teaching on the marital act when conducted outside of the nuptial sacramental bond, and what we'll just call here the James Martin Act. In an interview with the German magazine Bunte, published on March 4th, Bishop George Botzing agreed with the journalist's assertion that no one adhered to the church's teaching, that the marital act should be practiced exclusively within the nuptial sacrament, saying, that's true, and we have to somewhat change the catechism on this matter. Such acts are a gift from God, and not a sin. 
Asked if James Martin pairings were permissible, the German prelate replied, Yes, it is okay if done in fidelity and responsibility. It doesn't affect the relationship with God. Botzing, the Bishop of Lumberg, Western Germany, added, How someone lives their personal intimacy is none of my business. End quote. Botzing is openly rejecting the timeless moral teachings of the faith and sacred scripture's prohibitions on such activities, and by doing so he is rejecting the inerrancy of scripture. The man is the, an office holder in the formal institution of the faith that he just doesn't have. He is engaged in a protest against the Catholic Church, and as such, his Protestant minister getup he wears in public is actually appropriate for him. But Botzing still has yet to be censured by Rome because Francis gave his approval of the German synodal process some months ago. And why wouldn't he approve of it? The Germans have said consistently that all they want through this is being inspired by Amoris Laetitia, Francis's encyclical that upended Catholic morality it was the cause of the ignored dubia. One priest on Twitter has asked the obvious question, quote, Two questions emerge. How do men such as this rise to the level of a bishop, and how do they remain as a bishop even after flagrantly undermining the living faith of the people they are called upon to nourish in the spirit and truth? End quote. And it's rather simple. Francis wants the church engaged pretty much exclusively in material concerns. For the church to be welcoming to anyone and everyone without a call to conversion or repentance, he has said as much in numerous addresses and interviews, all of them filled with his weird modernist theology that can be summed up in his most famous axiom of all, who am I to judge? Except he does judge. He judges meany headed trads all the time. And for what reason? Because traditionally minded Catholics are a constant reminder that the Catholic faith is still alive and will not be replaced by his universal church of man, no matter how hard he tries. That's why Botzing and bishops like him are permitted to continue preaching their errors. That the kind of Catholic not permitted to participate in all of this, the kind of priest not valued in the church today, the one with the traditional faith and who adheres to traditional morality. Pray for the priest I'm about to tell you about. From Gloria TV, headline. Opus Dei de Frocks priest de facto for applying Francis's Parisia to Francis. Opus Dei is a Novus Ordo organization meant to keep traditionally inclined clergy and laity away from traditional orders. That's just the sad truth in practice. All weird hypotheses about their activities outside the parish aside, this is the net effect of that group since the council. And they cannot tolerate a priest who displays any disloyalty to the ever erroneous alleged supreme pontiff. Quote, the Opus Dei has expelled Father Hanvier Gibnau, age 42, for criticizing Francis. His superiors told him on February 25th that all appeals were rejected, leaving him with a last appeal to Francis. The Opus Dei suspended Gibnau last March when he continued to criticize Francis, whose support of James Martin Parings and activities, and his causes street causes big scandal in Africa. After nearly 25 years with the Opus Dei, Gibnau returned to his poor parents, who have nine children, in the Ivory Coast. On February 28th, he wrote an appeal to Francis, which he published on social media, referring to St. Catherine of Siena, who called on Gregory XI to resign if he was not willing to fulfill his duties. He asks Francis, rectify the errors of your pontificate. Gibbonau explained that he will be banned from all priestly activities, including ecclesiastical habit, if revengeful Francis confirms the decision of the prelate of the Opus Dei. But I'll accept it and wait for justice and truth from the next pope, he says. End quote. So, let's review. The Synod of Synodality is not a sociological exercise for the Church. It's an examination of how the Holy Ghost wants us to change the Church, and the biggest voice for that kind of change is Bishop Botzing, who says that the Church has been wrong for millennia on morality and personal conduct, who denies the inerrancy of sacred scripture as an extension of that, who denies that sins that cry out to heaven are really sins at all. Meanwhile, a brave priest who defends the Church's traditional understanding of the faith and personal conduct is expelled from the priesthood by the Opus Dei. Are you paying attention yet? Because this is the future the church, for the Church that the modernists want. When you take this issue and pair it with the suppression of the traditional Mass, you begin to see a pattern. A bearing of the faith and everything that goes with it, and a new faith emerging that has been given the name Catholicism, but really isn't. That's what we're faced here. In our time, and the modernists just love the fact that it looks like they're going to get their chance to remake the faith in their own image. I'm going to close this with a different kind of question for you. Do you understand what it is that the French mothers of those priests are marching from Paris to Rome for? It's not about the liturgy, at least not exclusively. And it's not just a preference. The enemies of tradition frame our love of the apostolic mass as a mere preference, but it is far more than that. 
That mass represents something very different from the people-centered modernism we witness every day in the church. The lex arandi, lex credendi, lex vivendi of the traditional faith is represented in the apostolic mass, and as Archbishop Roach himself has said on numerous occasions to the press, that mass is not compatible with the faith that was born at the Second Vatican Council. He said that, and it's on full display here, with Botzing and that bishop who I featured a few days ago who put that gross art on display in his cathedral. They all represent something else. The African priest, who was expelled by the Opus Dei, at least has the sense of Catholic morality, and in so doing is in conflict with the church of the springtime of the new advent. So please keep him and those mothers on pilgrimage in your prayer. And like and subscribe if you haven't, it really does help. As always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.